I cannot stress that enough. The flight attendant life is a lifestyle that you have to get used to. I'm two years in and I'm still getting used to it. So baby, it does not come quick. Yeah, come closer to me. Yeah, come closer to me. So much distance between us. attendant um if you know the company that i do fly for i just ask that you keep that to yourself confidential information um because the opinions of these videos and what i say are all my own all my own <laughs> and do not have anything to do with my employer i'm just trying to give you guys the tips and the insides and outs of the flight attendant world so with that being said today i have a video for one of my followers who asked me a series of questions her name is candace king i will put that somewhere up here so shout out to you for actually being interactive with me and i felt like it would be a lot easier if i answered your questions with a video because it's not just like a short answer response for each question that you asked me um so yeah without further ado if you want to hear the rest of that and hear a little bit more about the flightest in the world stay tuned so Candace did ask me a series of questions and they are on my computer. So if I'm looking down, bear with me. I mean, y'all know I have my YouTube journal that I'm usually looking at. So my computer is no different. Um, and if you didn't know, now you know. Her first question was, am I a commuter or did I move to my base? So I am a commuter. I don't believe that I want to move to base. I have been a commuter. I've been flying for two years. Um... I've been a commuter for two years with the airline that I worked at previously. I was based in Denver. When I first started with my airline now, I was based in Detroit and I commuted to Detroit. I live in Las Vegas. Um, I commuted to Detroit and now I am based in LA and I commute to LA. So I am a commuter. I like to say that I am a lifetime commuter and that's just, it is what it is. Um, she hit on a topic with crash pads. Um, I don't have a crash pad. When I first started with my other company and I was on full reserve, I had a crash pad. Now that I have a line, I believe that it's a waste of money for me to have a crash pad because I know when I'm starting a trip, when I'm finishing a trip, and I'm not going to spend all that money on a crash pad. Like, I'm just, I'm not. So, I do not have a crash pad, um, and I am a commuter. She also asked me if I like this career. I love my career. With every career, there comes ups and downs, pros and cons. It does not matter what you do in life. There will be good days and there will be bad days. What I can say about my career is that there is no other career field besides the aviation world where you can just decide, I want to get up and go and fly to this country and you're kind of there for little to no cost. Um, when I think about the different places that I want to go to, it's either I'm looking for a layover because I like to get paid when I visit new places. That's just me. I'm trying to get all my coins, honey. But I like to get paid when I visit places. So I look for longer layovers in the cities that I have not been to and that I want to go to. I look for layovers there and get paid while I'm exploring. Or you can always just wake up and be like, yo, I want to go to Bora Bora today. And you're in Bora Bora, you know, for again, little to no cost. So I think that the flight attendant job or the aviation world in general is very luxurious. However, you have to think about when you are being a flight attendant for the mass commercial world if that does that even make sense like you're for the masses of people in the commercial airline industry so not the private jets and not the private flights and all the other stuff the little baby jets and stuff but you are the main source of travel around this country and around the world you are dealing with so many people and those so many souls that you're dealing with when you're flying are dealing with so much stuff in their personal life so you have to take into consideration that people are going through 
their own personal hells, whether it's you're going to a funeral from, from a funeral, you just got diagnosed with a terminal illness, somebody else got diagnosed with a terminal illness, um, you lost your dog, your cat, you know, you have to think about all of the bad things that people are going through and why they're traveling. I say that to say, you can't take anything personal in the flight attendant world. When people are rude to you, which they are, because a lot of people lose um, <sighs> sense of manners once they step on the aircraft, okay? It's a real thing. I don't know what the airplane does to people, but they don't have manners. Um, so when they lose their sense of manners and they're rude to you, you just gotta let it roll off your shoulders. Like, you can't take things personal in the flight attendant world or you will be very, very, very unhappy. Like, <laughs> extremely unhappy because people are rude. And then you have to think about your own life. Like, I'm sure everybody has been rude to somebody when they have personal things going on. So not everybody is traveling for fun. And then you get the people who are traveling for fun and you're like, oh my gosh, it's your 50th anniversary. Like, I'm gonna give you all of the peanuts on the plane because I don't have anything else to give you. Or, you know, you, you make them feel special in their travel. Some people save up all year to go on one big vacation, you know? So you have to scale back and remember that like, you don't know what people are going through you can't take it personal when people are rude to you and that's a part that might suck because some days like some things do get to you no matter how hard you try not to take it personal some things do get to you because people are not the nicest people ever <laughs> but some days some things get to you and that makes the job a little bit harder um I believe that the pros definitely outweigh the cons, but it is a lifestyle that you have to get adjusted to. It is not just a job. It is not a career. You're not going home every night unless you work for certain companies. I think that there are certain companies who don't have layovers. I'm not really sure we have layovers, so that's all that I worry about. But um, you, you're not on a normal lifestyle like everybody else is like if you're a flight attendant you know exactly what i'm talking about because you get so excited to go home after work like if i could drive home after i finish working i don't even know how i feel because i'm so used to flying home then driving or I have to stay in LA because I have a trip that starts the next day or just anything like that. Like you, it's just not a normal way in which flight attendants operate. Like I fly to work, people drive to work. That's not normal. Like I board planes, people don't do that. It's just not normal. I cannot stress that enough. The flight attendant life is a lifestyle that you have to get used to. I'm two years in and I'm still getting used to it. So baby, it does not come quick. Let me tell you that. Um, but just stick it out. So yes, I love my career. Yes, I'm still getting adjusted to my career. Yes, I have bad days. Yes, I have great days. Yes, I am happy that I am a flight attendant. It's again one of the most luxurious jobs that i could have ever thought about having her next question was is it financially worth it and does it cover the cost of like crash pads ubers taxis whatever um let me say this when i first started flying with the first company i worked for i made less than 20 dollars per flying hour um, so that means like in the air, not per diem. You do make money around the clock, but it's at a different rate than it is when the door is closed on the airplane. <clears throat> when you're delayed, when you are sitting there with passengers on the plane, you are not making money unless your door is closed. And it sucks and people don't realize that. So when I'm delayed or when the passengers are, de are delayed, I'm delayed. Now you're cutting into my money. And you're cutting into my layover and I don't like it. So, again, when I started, I made less than $20 per flying hour. At that time, I did not have 
as many responsibilities as I do now. I was living at home with my mom. The only bill that I really had was my car note and my phone bill, I think. Yeah, car note and phone bill. So I didn't have responsibilities. I didn't have different like financial situations that I had to really worry about because all I had was two bills. Now I have my car note, I have all my bills, I live on my own. Um, so it is a lot more financial responsibility. If I would still be making under $20 an hour, I would not be able to have my own place at all. Now I make over $30 an hour and I'm able to have my own place um, with all my bills, my phone bill, my car note, all of that. Still buy food, still get Ubers. One thing that I can say is what I'm making now and what I pay in rent, I would not be able to have a crash pad somewhere else. Um, it's just not in my budget. So I do believe that it depends on how much financial responsibility you have. If flying is financially worth it. I was a cocktail server at party pools in Vegas for five years. Um, I had multiple jobs, all of that. I became a flight attendant for the future financial stability and what it could offer me in the future. Did I make more money cocktail waitressing? Yes, I did. I live in Vegas. I worked at a party pool. I made a lot more money. Um, would I say flying is financially worth like the career change? Yes, I would. Because in the long run, you're gonna be well off with all the perks and everything else that it offers in the long run, you will be just perfectly fine. The first couple of years are hard. You have to budget. I've never had to budget. I didn't have bills. I didn't have responsibilities. I didn't have to budget. Now I got all these bills and this apartment and uh, now I have to budget and figure out my life every month. But it is definitely financially worth it. I feel like now that I've hit um, I mean, I get a, you get a pay raise every year as a flight attendant, so you're always consistently progressing. So if you know how to budget from when you're making the 19, the 18, the less than 20, the over 20, the over 30, the over 40, 50, whatever. If you know how to budget at the very, very bottom, once you get those pay raises and you see, you know, how much more money you're making each and every year, you already have your budgeting plan in full effect, you'll be fine. So yes, it is a financially stable career and it's definitely worth it. You probably are like most people, depending on what you're doing in life previous to flying, you're probably taking a very heavy financial cut. Um, but with that being said, all that time that it takes for an airline to hire you is when you really need to stack and save stack and save stack and save and figure out a budgeting plan as soon as they tell you like how many hours you're going to get paid for that month you know monthly if you're on reserve you have a guaranteed rate if you're not on reserve you have to look at your paychecks and just take the least amount of money that you may make and figure out how to budget off of that and you will be just fine it just depends on what other things that you have going on. Like I said, when I first started and I was making under $20 an hour, I was perfectly fine because I did not have any other financial responsibilities besides my car note and my phone bill. Now that I have my apartment, I have all my bills, I have my car note, everything else that comes into play with living on your own and having those different, the different level of financial um, responsibilities. If I was making 20 something, less than 20 something dollars an hour, I would not be able to have everything that I have now. I wouldn't be able to have the level of things that I have now. Um, I would definitely have to downgrade a lot of my lifestyle. So just take into consideration whatever your personally financially responsible for will always be what you have to look at so some people may be well off with less than 20 some people may not be well off with less than 40 maybe they need to make 40 dollars an hour i don't know i don't have all those extreme bills like i don't have 
a car. I mean, I have a car. What the heck? I don't have a mortgage. I don't know how I got a car from mortgage. I don't have a mortgage. I don't have children. I don't have a spouse. It's me, myself, and I. And I'm not able to buy everything that, you know, I want all the time when I didn't have those financial responsibilities. Like when I was cocktail serving and all I had was a car note, baby, I was out here splurging urging on everything now I don't splurge as much but it's okay because I'm growing and I'm figuring out how to budget so that I can save money I want to purchase a home soon so that's kind of like my financial game plan um, but if you're if you got a bunch of responsibilities that are like overload and you don't have any money saved up those first couple years are gonna be real hard for you so I said I suggest that you figure out Everything that you may need to pay for, figure out a plan, figure out how much money you need to save up because again, those first two years are hard. I'm still in the second year. Like, it's a little rough. Depending on the pay scale of the different airlines that you go to, some people have the big jump after five years, some people have the big jump after two years, some people have the big jump, and the big jump is from like, like dollars range of raises. So like if I'm making 21, maybe I'm making 25 now or whatever the case may be, you jump up. So depending on your year, that determines how much you make. And then it also determines how much you have to work. So like people like me, I don't have kids or anything. So I can work more if I need to. I try to work bare minimum because I'd be tired, y'all. But if I needed to work more, I can I can do that because I don't have any other responsibilities. I don't have other people to tend to, I guess. But if you're a mother, like you need to be home. So you need to really look at the pay rate and figure out like, are you having help from a spouse? Do you have another set of income coming in? Like what's going on outside of just flying? Do you have a side hustle? Do you have a second job? Sometimes you can have second jobs in the flight attendant world. You just have to figure out what works for you. Like. A lot of people Uber, a lot of people Postmates, a lot of people do all Instacart or whatever as a side hustle on top of their flying stuff because those days that you have off, you're off. Like you don't have anything to do, you're at home. So most of the time you have off during the weekdays if you're junior enough and all of your friends are probably at work. So you're not gonna be able to hang out with your friends during the week. So you might as well have a second job or go out and do Postmates, Uber Eats, um, Instacart, whatever side hustle you can get going, I encourage everybody for them first two years, figure it out. Try to do something on the side. If you have a four-door car, go Uber. Like, make sure you got some mace or something in your car because people are crazy out here. But uh, yeah, like go Uber. Um, if I could Uber, I would, but I don't have a four-door car. I kind of just got to figure out what exactly works for you. I don't know, y'all. Um, Candace, I hope that I answered those questions in a way that helps you make a decision to whether you want to be a flight attendant or don't want to be a flight attendant. Um, if you have anything else to ask me, go ahead and message me or comment on my videos below. If y'all want me to make a video about something, let me know because I'm here <laughs> and on my off days, I'm just going to make videos for y'all. So, so with that being said, as always, be great, be kind and be fine. Real fine. I'll see y'all next time. Stay on my mind. And if it isn't love, why does it hurt so bad? Make me feel so sad.